I know it has been a long service already, so many things, but I wanted to share just a few reflections on our theme of built to be a blessing. This has been, if you didn't know, a work of love for the last year or so as we have planned this event. And this theme of built to be a blessing was one that we settled on. And the scripture that uh, Reverend Nelson just read um, is, is kind of a theme that we have settled on. And the idea of built, we, we think of that word built because when something like this campus and this building have been mainstays in our lives for so long, we can forget that they did not always exist. There was a time before this building was built, before each brick brick was formed and baked and stacked one on another to form this magnificent structure. There was a time when the wood from these pews rose from the earth as trees, right? That was how, that's how we get wood. That was where the, this wood had to have begun. There was a time when the First Presbyterian Church congregation dreamed of a building on the corner of El Dorado and Vine to house church and community life, worship, fellowship, and service. Then, in the 1950s, the dream continued of a multi-purpose gym to serve the inner city of Stockton, which was rapidly growing north and extending into this Magnolia district of Stockton, where we are located. This building and the sanctuary represent years and years of hard work, lots of committee meetings, I'm sure, as we are Presbyterians after all, and a great deal of prayer to continue to build this place of worship over the course of its 100 years. Last summer, we took a closer look at the stained glass windows that adorn our sanctuary as part of a special sermon series. And one of the things that struck me was that at, in that dedication ceremony in 1923, when the building was dedicated, there were no stained glass windows yet. Did you know that? It wasn't until 1925 that the east window behind you, that beautiful window uh, with Jesus with his arms extended, was installed and dedicated. That was 1925. And the last aisle window was not dedicated until 1956. The building we have inherited was built over many years through love, dedication, teamwork, discernment, generosity, and faithful stewardship. And really, it's still being built. In the three months of 2023 alone, so not in the past year, just in the past three months, we have installed a new bathroom vanity, a replacement window in Koinonia, the gym building after a break-in, a new phone system, window coverings for our stained glass, roof repairs, and the pews have been re-secured to the floor because they had started to travel after 100 years. (laughs) The truth is that the building has continued to be built over time as it has blessed generation after generation. But of course, our stewardship and love of this campus is much more than the bricks and the mortar. I'd imagine that for all of us, as has been shared today, the memories that spring to mind in this building are about the beautiful sacredness of this space, but also about the people who have filled it and the ways that we have seen the good news of Jesus Christ proclaimed in stained glass windows, words preached, love shared and proclaimed, music that has stilled our hearts, healing and hope found, and the spirit moving within these walls, and also sending us into the world, away from these walls, to share the grace we have received from God. Like with any house that becomes a home, the good stuff is what fills it. The everyday miracles of life and love, forgiveness and restoration, grace and peace that bloom as the Holy Spirit nurtures and leads us, day by day, step by step, as we just sang. The scripture our planning committee settled on for this celebration highlights the beautiful truth that we are God's handiwork. Even as we have built this building over time and continue to do so, we are being built by our creator. 
We are not finished, but continue to be crafted by the one who knows each of us better than we know ourselves. We are led and equipped by our good shepherd for the path set before each generation. Even as our world changes and the church grows and shifts to follow Jesus in each new season. This building is a beautiful blessing that we continually offer for God's use to build us in us a living temple, a church that is known by grace, showing the glory of God in how we live and in what we say. All of the dedication stones, if you didn't know this, on our campus, the one that is um, on this main building, also the one that is uh, dedicating Koinonia Hall, our gym, and also Calistro Park, who's named after Dorothy Calistro, the beloved um, longtime uh, mainstay of this church that we've heard so much about. Every dedication stone says, dedicated to the glory of God. That glory is surely not just in beautiful stained glass and impressive structures, but in the lives changed and the truth and the justice and love of Jesus Christ that has been witnessed here. So how have you seen the glory of God in these 100 years? How have you experienced the beauty and compassion and forgiveness and restoration and power and wonder, all of these things that we think of when we think of the glory of God here? How do you feel it still? Friends, let us remember that the glory of God is still here, building us and leading us for such a time as this. We are God's handiwork as we continue to fill this space with our worship, service, and fellowship, with our deep love for each other and for God who is so faithful. This building was and is built to be a blessing, and so are we. Amen and amen. I told you it'd be short. <laughs>